بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بعرض تعزيات I offer my heartiest condolences over the martyrdom anniversary of the commander of the faithful Imam Ali peace be upon him to the savior of our world Imam Nahdi may Allah hasten his reappearance I also pray the Lord to accept all the acts of worship by all believers all across the world during this sacred month of Ramadan In his final moments on 21st of the holy month of Ramadan Imam Ali peace be upon him made some wills and advices the last one of them is this he said never abandon bidding good and forbidding evil narrations tell us that Imam Ali was speaking his last words in a weak tone and he began his words addressing his family and all who will hear of him ever therefore each of you respected ladies is the advice of Imam Ali peace be upon him moreover Beyond geographical and time boundaries all women are the addressees of Imam Ali's words the same as all men on the condition they hear of him Imam Ali began his advices and rules with these words I address you and whoever will hear of me the last few words of Imam Ali peace be upon him was and do not abandon bidding good and forbidding evil According to some narrations his holiness Imam Ali peace be upon him said goodbye to his family after these words then Imam Ali peace be upon him murmured these sacred words there is no god but Allah for several times and passed away now i would like to make two points for all the ladies here and all who will hear of me one is that after the 20 and some days passed this holy month of Ramadan that i hope the remnant of this month to pass in good fortune too you dear ladies should do your best to keep all the spirituality and rewards you gained in this month and make a decision to improve them in future about this issue i want to make a recommendation to you dear ladies you all are mothers sisters daughters aunts cousins grandmothers But whoever you are never cut terms with people though it sounds difficult but it is so important sometimes you might encounter different tastes and opinions or face an unpleasant language and consequently you may feel bad about others but whatever you do cutting terms should not be an option otherwise if it is a member of your family like your sister mother brother or others then you have committed a serious sin narration suggests that ending such relationship even nullifies the good deeds god almighty has put so much stress on these issues and never take it easy under no circumstances never cut terms with people do not abandon each other and never destroy relationships even if they are not a member of your family and you are not closely related it would be a big mistake as Quran and narrations have called it so several times so if you cut relationship with your family then it's a grave sin and if they are not your family it is an extremely big mistake based on islamic scriptures You should make a faithful decision about this issue and never cut relationships with anyone no matter what connections you have with people try not to break them up and never end your relationships with others you can also study the islamic references and see the emphasis on this issue as you are well acquainted with books and studying you will meet hundreds of narrations by the holy infallible who have strongly denounced the ending of a relationship if they are your family then it's so much a heinous act to cut terms with them and if they are not a family member it's again detested in his law there is a narration from imam sadiq peace be upon him as well as many other narrations which suggest everyone should try to be the best member of the family if you are a mother or a sister you should try to be the best in the family it means that if others cut terms with you you shouldn't do the same if they reproach you you shouldn't do the same not only this is not humiliation but also this is a highest stature you can gain in this world and the afterlife if you read the history of the 14 infallibles you will see that despite the numerous problems and hardships they suffered from the people they never cut relationships with them although these hardships led to the sufferings and even martyrdom of infallibles they never left people and always stayed with them 
There is only one exception to this issue, and that is Lady Fatima, peace be upon her, who cut terms with the enemies of the Holy Prophet of Islam after his martyrdom, and that exception was rooted in an extremely important ideological belief when the Islam was in jeopardy of being derailed from what the Holy Prophet had ordered. Cutting relationship is an abnormal act, either with the family members or the rest of the people. This point, of course, is not restricted to women only, and it is the responsibility of all people, men and women. Here, I repeat again that you should make a dissent, proud and decisive decision and resort to the Holy Prophet's household to withstand the problems in the way so that you will be free of the divine retributions in this world or the afterlife. So, make a decision to amend your relationships with all whom you're angry with or try to make friends with those who are angry with you. Narrations reveal that those who volunteer to reform a relationship will enter the paradise first. You can have this high stature in this life and the afterlife with a decisive decision and tolerating the problems and obstacles in the way. In addition, you should invite your family members and friends to correct their connections and relationships with others. I believe that this would help your prayers and other acts of worship such as fasting, supplicating and the charitable acts to remain in your records after the holy month of Ramadan. My second point is regarding the last words of Imam Ali peace be upon him, who said, and do not abandon bidding good and forbidding evil. The Imam continued with these words, otherwise the villains will rule over you and then your prayers won't take effect. Now, I speak about the first part of the sentence where Imam Ali peace be upon him instructs us not to leave the very important practice of bidding good and forbidding evil. Imam Ali sends his advices to all men and women as he declared it at the beginning of his words. If you are a daughter, admonish your parents. If you're a mother, guide your children. And if you're a wife, guide your husband and family. You should bid the good to the people around you and tell them about their mistakes in good manners as well. Do not desert the essentially important practice of bidding good and forbidding evil. Of course, you should not forget that you better be a good doer in the first place. These are two different acts. Firstly, you should decide to fulfill your duties and secondly, you should decide to guide others as well. Definitely, if you didn't fulfill your duties, it shouldn't stop you from guiding others since they are two distinct acts. God forbid, if you leave out both of these acts, then you have committed two sins. You'll be questioned and punished for each of these acts in the afterlife. I repeat again that you should be a good person in the first place, but if you fail to do so, it doesn't mean that you can't leave your duty in forbidding evil. There is a consensus among all scholars in this issue. The most significant and important good are the ideological beliefs. They include oneness of God Almighty, His justice, the prophethood of Prophet Muhammad, the imimate, and the judgment day. Each of these pillars of Islam has its own explanations and descriptions. These beliefs are foundations of Islam. They are the foundations of all divine religions. The invitation of Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, up to the Prophet Muhammad's invitation, they all are founded on these beliefs. The most significant good are the beliefs and the most devastating evil are corrupt thoughts and beliefs. Corrupt beliefs regarding any of the beliefs like oneness of God, justice, prophethood, emimate, and the judgment day. They are the most devastating evil ever because they eradicate the foundations. Next are the Islamic rulings and obligations and the people. Then the topic of moral and amoral acts is of high significance. At fourth come the issues concerning the recommended and detested acts either in rulings or morals. These are how the good and evil are ranked according to their significance. You have this responsibility to introduce the good to the people and inform them of the wrong. If they get to the right way, then that's marvelous. But if they reject to step in the right way, then you have done your part and they have received clear proofs. That person cannot complain to God Almighty that she has not been informed of the right and wrong and she will be questioned for her wrong acts. There are tens of narrations and verses of Holy Quran that indicate this concept. A verse of Quran says, 
The people should not have a plea against Allah. It means that we shouldn't leave out the practice of bidding good and forbidding evil so that there would be people who have plea against God Almighty as those people would complain why others didn't tell them about their mistakes. Of course, you are not held accountable if you fulfill your duty and tell them about the right way, although they don't listen to you by their own wish. Sometimes you speak to 50 people. Sometimes you get the chance of speaking to more than a thousand people. Even if a small number of those people change the way and are guided by your word, then you will take share of all their rewards as well. And if none of them listens to you, then you have done your job and responsibility. In this way, you actually have helped the God's cause and goal that is, so that people should not have a plea against Allah. There are no limits to inviting people to the right way. You can talk to thousands thousands of people at a time. Today our world is swamped into ignorance and deviation by the mass propaganda preached by the big number of satellite channels and other communication platforms. Now here is the question, don't the believers have any responsibilities to preach the good and denounce the evil? We shouldn't limit the great practice to the daily acts of worship. It should not be restricted to the believers. As I said earlier, the most important good are the beliefs. Today, billions of people, young and old, men and women, educated or uneducated, are not in the right way. Is it not mandatory for the believers to guide them to the right way? Of course it is. It is a collective obligation. Anyone who has the power to do his job in preaching goodness and denouncing evil, they should do their part or they are blamed. In one or two years ago, I received a list of more than 100 satellite channels in 40 languages that produce programs about the Saint Mary in their own wrongful attitude. Saint Mary is of high respect for all the Muslims and the Holy Quran calls her truthful but those who call themselves as adherents of Prophet Messiah and Saint Mary have cast many lies to her holiness and preach those lies in their channels. Saint Mary is a servant of the Lady Fatima Zahra, peace be upon her. And now, shouldn't we have more than 100 satellite channels in more than 40 languages to introduce this great figure? Who is responsible for this to be accomplished? We all are responsible. All men and women have this responsibility to accomplish these goals as a part of bidding good and forbidding evil. There is a unanimous agreement between all scholars and this issue, preaching activities. If conducted correctly and artfully, they change the people. The Holy Quran addresses all segments of people with all religions and beliefs. We have in the Holy Quran, as it says, all people. This signifies that the Holy Quran addresses all people who should transmit the Quran's call to the world. All men and women should take this responsibility. Certainly, the women should preserve chastity in their high position, especially in regards to their job and roles in the society. God Almighty has decreed the women to perform their duties while preserving their chastity and respectful place. It is not permissible for the women to overlook their esteem and honor. Yet, it doesn't mean that they don't have any responsibility in this regard. The women should found Hussein Yaz and Moss hold religious sessions and gather together Together. And more importantly, they have this responsibility to establish satellite channels to transmit the message of Quran and the Ahlul Bayt to the world. Men and women, they both have this responsibility to lead the people. If the men fail to fulfill their duties in preaching the true Islam, are the women exempted for doing so? Absolutely not. They should do this job in its correct way. They should perform their job in a way that it touches the hearts of the people by using good language and framework. Today, I met with three people who had stepped in the way of Ahlul Bayt. When I asked them about their families, they said that none of their families has converted to Shia Islam. There are many people who learned about the Ahlul Bayt, changed the way and followed this noble culture. Bidding good and forbidding evil results in the guidance of these people. 
If no one had guided those converts to the right way, then who was to be blamed for it? These three people, whom I met today, stated that they were guided through watching some programs on satellite channels preaching for Ahlul Bayt, and I taught them to make efforts and lead their families to the right way and the Ahlul Bayt. You all can see that there are hundreds of educated women guided to the path of Ahlul Bayt through the very satellite channels working in this way. Recently, a woman from non-Islamic countries came to me, along with some of her husband's family. This lady was non-Muslim and a university teacher. She turned to Islam after watching programs on some of Shia channels. Unfortunately, her family and relatives are still non-Muslims. Not only she became a Muslim, but she turned to become a Muslim woman who follows the Prophet's family. When she came to me and had number of questions that I answered, this duty lies on everybody's shoulder to get the message across. Today, the responsibility of a Muslim woman is to try to inform the world about the Holy Quran and Ahlul Bayt. God Messenger left these two holy things, his progeny and Quran, as treasures for all Muslims. I am stating this once again. I am stating this once again that when the Prophet made this statement, he put his two index fingers next to each other and said that the Holy Quran and my progeny, the Ahlul Bayt, are like these two fingers put next to each other. Please pay close attention. The Holy Prophet did not give the comparison of his right hand index finger next to his other fingers because one of them is longer than the other and they are not precisely equal. Whatever is approved by the Holy Quran, it's also approved by the Ahlul Bayt. On the other hand, whatever is approved by Ahlul Bayt, it's also approved by the Holy Quran. Never did the Holy Prophet give this comparison ever to any other Muslim beside his family. So whatever the Holy Quran approves of the Prophet's family approves. Whatever the Prophet's family approves of, the Holy Quran approves it. No one in the history has given this comparison before. It's only the Prophet and it's only referred to Prophet's family and the Holy Quran. Never been seen the Prophet doing this comparison before to anyone or anything else beside his family and the Holy Quran. The Holy Prophet used each of the index fingers and the both hands to give this comparison. The Holy Prophet said, My family and the Quran are like these two index fingers, the right hand index finger and the left hand index finger. The Holy Quran and the Prophet's family are exactly the same. So it's mandatory to invite the people to Ahlul Bayt and the Holy Quran with good mannerism, being well informed about the Islamic laws and knowing the legal and illegal acts in Islam. Just as it is mandatory upon all Muslim men to learn these legal rulings, it's also mandatory upon every Muslim woman to learn them too. Maybe a lady by herself can manage to run a Husseiniya, an Islamic center by herself, Maybe she cannot do it alone. She might need extra pair of hands to help her. So everyone with their capacity and capability should help. In order to run a satellite channel that is concerned only to women issues, efforts need to be joined to accomplish this job. Imam Ali, peace be upon him, have said, never forget the responsibility and the duty of forbidding evil and bidding good. So, when you run a satellite channel, you are implementing this very important Islamic concept of forbidding evil and bidding good. Millions and millions of people can benefit from the satellite channel. For each person you guide, you will be rewarded. And for those who decide not to be guided, then you have discharged your duty. On the day of judgment, you will not be held accountable because you did what you could and you have discharged your duty. Join your efforts and run a satellite channel with as many people as you need to do so. Then you can name it after Lady Fatima Zahra, peace be upon her or can run other satellite channels carrying the names of these great respected ladies such as Ummu Banin, Ummu Kulthum, Lady Nargis, Lady Khadija, Lady Zainab, Lady Rukaya, and Lady Sakina. Yes, of course you can accomplish this big responsibility and it is within your ability and your reach. At times, a single individual person can benefit from the concept of bidding good and from bidding evil. At other times, at other times, a larger or greater number as big as millions of people can benefit from it. 
by running these satellite channels. Why the so-called adherents of St. Mary have over 100 satellite channels and in 40 different languages broadcasting blasphemy, while Lady Fatima, peace be upon her, doesn't have any channels in respect of her name? Yes, we can defend the name of Lady Fatima, peace be upon her. It just needs a little bit of effort and determination. If you don't accomplish this task now, others will accomplish it. The next generation will accomplish it, but with difference that you will all regret yourselves in your life in the hereafter for not accomplishing this task now. All of you have the responsibility to be good and forbid evil in the world. This responsibility lays on everybody's shoulder. Of course, each should act based upon their capacity and ability. It's very wrong to think that we only need to take care of our society and to neglect other societies in the world. We should learn from Prophet's history and the infallibles. How many hypocrites did live in Medina during Prophet's time? Not only these hypocrites did not listen to Prophet's words, but they used to make him and make fun of him. But on the surface, they claimed to be Muslims, while they were not. Please pay attention to these two narrations. These narrations have been mentioned in reliable sources and tradition books such as Al-Kafi and Safinatul Bahar. One of these narrations is stated by Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, who said that Imam Ali, peace be upon him, did not get his absolute right to caliphate even though there were about 10,000 witnesses on day of Qadir. Imam then continued that when you present a case to a judge with two witnesses, you will get your right most likely. But Imam Ali, peace be upon him, despite having more than 10,000 witnesses, still did not get his absolute right to caliphate. After Holy Prophet of Islam murdered him, there were 10,000 people in Medina whom clearly witnessed witnessed and knew about the Qadir event, but it still usurped Imam Ali's right to caliphate. These 10,000 witnesses, these 10,000 witnesses were all Prophet's companions who had seen and heard the Prophet in Medina. Regardless of this huge number, Imam Ali still couldn't get his right. There is also another narration by Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, who said that by his good manners and kind treatment, the Holy Prophet made a thousand hypocrites turn to become good Muslims, and they all left hypocrisy and debauchery once for all. This number shows the great multitude of hypocrites living back then to Medina during Prophet's time. Despite this huge number of hypocrites living in Medina, the Prophet yet called kings and rulers surrounding Medina and Arabian Peninsula toward Islam. For example, he called the king of Persia, the king of Rome, and the African kings and rulers toward Islam. And because of this Prophet's call, many converted to Islam, maybe not right away, but still they converted at the end. It's not quite that we should only focus and take care of our society, but instead we can work on our society and at the same time on other societies too. So it's against the Prophet's heritage and legacy not to look after other societies in the world. Moreover, at family level, you can bid good and forbid evil, and also at the same time, you can forbid evil and bid good at community and city level. Imam Ali said, never abandon bidding good and forbidding evil. So you have this responsibility to conduct this job both in your country and the world through the media outlets. All men and women have this responsibility, but there's one difference in this case, and that is you dear ladies should preserve your high position as Muslim women. One of the most recommended responsibilities of the women is to stay pure in the society and preserve their high personality. Considering all these elements, the women are expected to fulfill their duties regarding bidding good and forbidding evil. This is a collective duty for all Muslim men and women, and they shouldn't relinquish until this duty is perfectly completed by others. But we all know it is not completed, so everyone should engage in this job. By fulfilling this great responsibility, that university teacher in Western countries learns about the right way 
and becomes a Shia Muslim. Moreover, she publishes a book about Shia Islam and gave me a copy of it. The number of such people is growing. The practice of bidding good and forbidding evil is not restricted to men only. The Holy Quran has also obligates all the Muslim men and women. The Islamic rulings and the good and evil embrace all people at all times. The last advices of the commander of the faithful Imam Ali peace be upon him. At the early morning of the 21st of the holy Ramadan addresses all people who will hear of this message. And now that I related these words of Imam Ali, all who hear me or will hear me should fulfill the last words of Imam Ali, who said, and do not abandon bidding good and forbidding evil. I hope the Almighty God accepts all your acts of worship and they remain in your records. I also pray the Lord to grant all men and women success in acting on the last words of Imam Ali, peace be upon him, and do not abandon bidding good and forbidding evil. Otherwise, the villains will rule over you and your prayers don't take effect. May Allah bless Muhammad and his pure descendants.